हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाय दिस सी आदर्श जोशी एंड यू आर वाचिंग फ्यूचर ऑफ एजुकेशन सो वेलकम टू ग्रुप टू एंड कंग्रेचुलेशन यू ऑन द राइट ट्रैक यू बॉट द गुड थिंग सो आई वेलकम यू टू द अमेजिंग पेपर नंबर सेवन ई एंड एस सो लेट्स सी वॉट इज ई आई एस एंड एस एम एंड वाई आर वी सपोज टू स्टडी इट ओके सो वॉट बेटर वे टू सी दैन इंस्टीट्यूट राइट करेक्ट ओके लेट्स सी वॉट इज पेपर नंबर सेवन सो फर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू आर लुकिंग एट दिस इज आई सी आई वेबसाइट okay so they have divided this paper 7 into two major chunk that is section a that is that talks all about eis that is enterprise information system and then we have section b which covers strategic management very good okay so now as we can see we have about five chapters to cover in eis and at the same time we have around eight chapters to be covered in strategic management so let's just see ki what do you actually mean by enterprise information system okay first you know that what do you mean by enterprise also you know what do you mean by uh, information system now we have to combine these three words and let's just see whether it forms any concept or not okay so we are nowadays dependent on technology in many ways whatever you think about you think about commerce you think about studies uh, you think about you know entertainment lots and lots of stuff nowadays is all dependent upon technology so actually this is what makes it important for us being a chartered accountants to know about this technology because sooner or later we are going to audit our clients some of those whose entire business is purely based on this technology so that is the reason we are bound to le uh, learn about this technology and we are supposed to know about it are we supposed to know the detail and intricacies and you know everything about technology no correct we are not supposed to know that because we are not engineers and we are not planning to become engineers so what are we supposed to know are we supposed to know about what all technologies are out there yes we are okay and uh, every technology that we are going to talk about are we going to speak about that in great details and depth no we should understand how those technologies are affecting us as a chartered accountant so we will learn about them and then we'll see how they are influencing our business right okay very good so let us first see what are the chapters that we have to cover in information uh, enterprise information system okay so first of all let me tell you this attempt that you are watching it is for may to 2020 and if you are watching it after that uh, i would request you to just you know check whether there is some updates that has been done out because or i will recommend you to buy the newer batch okay so first thing eis they have divided into five chapters let's see what is the weightage of this five chapters and you no know, once we'll get to know about this eis and sm then we'll gradually decide why is it important for us okay so let's just see i am going to study in student section then i am going to bs knowledge portal i hope you know about this website because this is where you will find plenty of things that can be taken in use by students see this is paper number 7 enterprise information system and strategic management okay you can see this study material revision test paper mock test paper question papers and session answers this rtps are something that you need to need to study before going to exams mock test papers will help you in what mock test papers will help you in checking assess, accessing your assessing your knowledge question papers the past question papers and the session answers are they respond to correspond to uh, this question papers okay so in this bus knowledge portal this is a new scheme and you are a proud student of new scheme of education and let's see skill wise weightage of this subject i am going for may 20 as i've already said if you are watching it for may uh, november 20 then i'm afraid you have bought the old ones and just get the new ones 
okay so first thing let us see what institute thinks how much we should know about this subject correct so okay just give me one second yes here we are this is paper number 7a that is enterprise information system okay so it is said that there are five chapters to this eis we already know that we have seen that now the percentage that is weightage of these chapters are equally divided see everywhere you will find 15% to 25% is it common for every chapter does that mean that each and every chapter is important and equally important yes that it's it's correct so suppose uh, this uh, paper 7 is of 100 marks 50 marks weightage is for eis 50 marks is for sm out of those 50 marks we have five chapters for for eis all the five of them are going to come for around 10 marks very good so every each and every chapter that we are going to learn in this class are important of course and they are equally important so whatever time and energy you are going to spend for chapter number 4 that we are will be beginning shortly you have to invest the same in rest of the chapters okay can we say the same about sm let's just take a look so 7b is strategic management this is again is for 50 marks and you will see there are eight chapters in all correct this is not more than that eight chapters and again they have given the similar weightage of 10 to 15% for each and every sub, uh, chapter okay so it gets easy again every chapter in sm has equal importance very good and as we know that this is going to be a mcq paper right 30 marks will be mcq and 70 marks will be descriptive okay so all in all you are getting an idea as to what we are about to do in this class now let me tell you in the brief uh, what do you mean by technology so students we can write an essay about technology let me tell you that correct we all know what do you mean by technology and uh, if you see around yourself right now some of you might be even on your phone as you were watching this section uh, this recording some of you might be you know uh, going through this lectures on mobile itself you need internet for this you know how to you know connect to internet you know how to google you know how youtube works you know everything see technology wise you know a lot of stuff also you are supposed to know this stuff best part about this eis is they have upgraded it they have brought it to actual scenario that is there outside i won't be able to say that in case of it sn that was there before this okay this is a new scheme that we are learning but before that there was it and sm that is information technology and strategic management those were all outdated technologies okay nothing new now in this eis now what they have done is they have you know they have put in all the latest stuff that is out there actually practically that is out there that you should you should know and that in future you might be working in this some of this technologies and they have thrown out whatever was not required or outdated obsolete so now the best part is you are learning the latest techno of the technology and what is the downside we are learning the latest ones so we are supposed to know how those works in this practical so this uh, in today's scenario we need to know which technology works in what way and how are people using them for their own personal benefits because ultimately you are supposed to audit whether they have uh, efficiently and effectively used uh, and incorporated this technology into their businesses or not correct or whether they are at threat of something this is all you are supposed to say so uh, we know you you have uh, i think you are already started with audit it's also in group 2 you know to audit something we should know about that thing and then and only then we are, we can uh, you know audit that and it's uh, of course it's uh, natural you know 
कैन यू ऑडिट समथिंग यू डोंट नो नो यू कैन नॉट बिकॉज यू नीड टू नो द बेसिक्स ऑफ द थिंग्स टू ऑडिट टू सी वेदर दे दे आर बीन डन इन द मैनर दे वे सपोज टू बी डन करेक्ट सो नाउ वॉट इंस्टीट्यूट इज एक्सपेक्टिंग फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट इज टू हैव सम लेवल ए पर्टिकुलर लेवल ऑफ नॉलेज अबाउट एनी पर्टिकुलर गिवन सब्जेक्ट सो देर आर दिस टाइप ऑफ स्किल्स दैट आर दैट यू कैन सी ऑन योर कंप्यूटर स्क्रीन दीज आर द स्किल्स दैट आर एक्सपेक्टेड आउट ऑफ यू सो लेट मी टॉक अबाउट कॉम्प्रीहेंशन हेंशन एंड नॉलेज ब्रो वॉट डू यू नीन मीन बाई नॉलेज सो हियर इट से नॉलेज इन्वॉल्व रिकोगनाइजिंग और रिमेम्बरिंग फैक्ट टर्म्स एंड बेसिक कंसेप्ट ओके दिस इज अ स्किल to have a knowledge to know remember and you know remember facts and know the terms and concepts comprehension involves demonstrating the understanding of the facts okay then the next skill is analysis and application in an application it involves use of acquired knowledge you understand this second skill is based on the first one in first one you are gaining knowledge in second one you are actually putting your knowledge to application you are using your knowledge to gain something out of it analysis involves identifying issues and examining examining the same to solve the problems okay this get goes a step beyond now the third is evolution and synthesis let's not go there let's not go there why because let's just see whether it is required out of you or not so as you can see for foundation students and intermediate students you will not find level 3 here they i have expected this evaluation and synthesis level knowledge only out of a ca final student congratulations for that and we are just uh, concerned with level 1 and level 2 let us say level 1 is knowledge and level 2 is application of knowledge so when you see paper number 7a enterprise information system they are saying that 30 to 55% of it would be we would be looking at the knowledge part and 45 to 70 we would be looking for application part of it okay this is going to be the skill wise weightage and at the same time for strategic management they have done it 50 70 and 30 50 as you can see in strategic management they have uh, given more importance to knowledge rather than the practical aspects uh, application of the knowledge why see this is strategy that we are talking about that to huge big level stra like strategies there is corporate strategies there are many level of strategies from a ca inter student it would be too much to ask for the practical application of those strategies it's enough that you just understand what are the strategies that people are using out there that's enough for you right so what they have done is they have reduced the application part of it and they have increased the knowledge part of it but it cannot be said about yes because they already know you have knowledge of the information system you are tech savvy people you see entire day you find yourself surrounded by technology you know better than me and anyone out there because you are the latest generations you are the latest versions of yourselves right they know you have knowledge what they want to check is how are you putting that knowledge into application can you actually apply this knowledge to gain something out of it and that is the reason they have kept more weightage for application and less for the knowledge okay so now that we have understood that what is eis and sm and what all we are going to learn in it let's just discuss some of the chapters in detail so that you you get a better idea so in this eis there are five chapters as we already know let us just take a look what are these five chapters okay let's go to chapter number 5 core banking system guys have you ever in your life heard the word core banking system yeah no actually see this i'm specifically recording this for you for may 20 so i also i am also recording a hindi version of it uh, and but that would be a live batch so maybe it will be more interactive this one is going to be just you and me i mean i mean my camera and me <laughs> okay so just tell me do you have you ever heard about core banking system yes you have very good okay if you haven't just google it a bit or we'll be studying this in great depth depth okay so core banking system is something that has reformed the world around us at least for banking perspective yes in it has 
what does a core bank system does they have taken everything from the banks and they have introduced technology and they have put everything that bank does into the technology or in other way i would say every in every work that bank does they have introduced technology to each and everything in each and every act that the bank does so now what is happening is if you have account in some remote area say your village and you have a bank in sbi you go anywhere in india just tell them your customer number or your mobile number your name they will be able or maybe your account number they will be able to take out your account and let you know whatever you want to know about the account or maybe they can even give some services attached to them that's a fact it was not possible earlier but now it is so now core banking has revolutionized the banking sector and it is benefiting not only the customers but also the bank officials as well so now things have become transparent now things have become absolutely fabulous i would say because of this core banking system so you are account at one place and anywhere in india you go do you do any transactions you want and it will automatically be routed into your account and everything that you do can be seen step by step in your personal accounts so this is what we are going to learn in chapter 5 okay most amazing chapter of all this eis is chapter number 4 that talks about e-commerce m commerce and emerging technologies which i know you know better than me you have been using e-commerce i don't even some of you might not even know but you are using e-commerce in like every day of your life have you ever you know bought something from flipkart amazon mintra snapdeal ptm mall there are n number of malls out there right now these are all e-commerce websites or e-commerce businesses they are selling their products online electronically without even opening any shop in any of the remote areas or any of the areas in the world all they are doing is they have given you a website they want you to log into your account they want you to place your order buy whatever you want to buy and they will deliver it to you in within a number of days this is e-commerce then what do you mean by e-commerce have you ever heard about e-commerce because see you might have heard about e-commerce but let me tell you a lot of students have never heard about e-commerce or if they have heard they don't know the concept the concept is a very amazing e-commerce when done through a handheld mobile phone or a mobile device or a portable device it's called e-commerce so the same flipkart site instead of that site you are using a mobile app so that is you are using or you are browsing or you are consuming you are a e-commerce consumer and you are uh you are using this m commerce technology then what do you mean by emerging technologies emerging technologies means technologies that have recently hit the market and those which are going to go like forever these are the technologies that that this technologies this emerging technologies are revolutionizing today right now they are being introduced every second something new is being introduced in the market and these things these technologies are revolutionizing our today and tomorrow some of the future students will be talking about this technology that they have changed the way we are talking about core banking system today so to give you a brief example i would say cloud computing it's a it's a thing of now today today people are 100% depend on cloud right now i have shared this video lectures with you on cloud okay you might have bought pen drive but some of you might even have downloaded this from google drive right this is what the drive is literally helping us grow our business this is, uh, like i everything my entire office is on drive all my classes all my lectures are on drive i can take them anywhere i want this laptop any if anything happens to my laptop right now none of my work gets affected because all my data has been backed up to the cloud what do you mean by cloud we'll study in deep but these are some of the emerging technologies okay let's see what do you mean by information system and its component see we are studying enterprise information system 
to understand the information system that has been used by the enterprise, we need to first understand what do you mean by information system? And what are the components? What are the things that combine together forms an inter information system? So we'll be learning about information systems and how, what are their components and how, how this systems works. And that we are going to do in chapter number three. Very good. Now, let's see. Have you ever heard, heard, heard about uh, tally? Each one of you might have, right? Have you ever heard about uh, QuickBooks? Some of you. Okay. So the moment you go out of India or you try to you know, give services to someone who is residing out of India, they won't know tally. Yes, of course they won't. They use QuickBooks. This they they QuickBooks are using cloud computing in a very fabulous manner. They have developed their own financial and accounting system. Everything is online. They give you access and you have your business on your mobile phones. Everything that your business is doing right away can be seen by just a click. They have revolutionized accounting. See, all these things are important. That is the reason they have kept it into your syllabus. Nothing, not even a single word in this entire syllabus is of no use. Not even a single. Every word conveys a story which is useful for you today for the exams and in your practice or in your job, your entire life, you will be 100% dependent upon technology. Correct. So this financial and accounting systems that are being used today will be learning in chapter number two. And then there's an amazing chapter number one known as automated business processes. So whatever is being done till date has been optimized now to make it more efficient, better, less time consuming, you know, faster in every way. So suppose, let me give you an example. Uh, consider two situations, one traditional and one new. In traditional banking systems, in that scenario, answer me this, you want to withdraw 1000 rupees from your account. Let, please tell me, what would be your step number one? Yes, uh, imagine a traditional scenario. No internet banking, no, no ATM, nothing, nothing. Traditional, normal, old banks. Okay, let's go back, uh, you know, let's go back 10, 15 years and let, then let's see. You, the first step that you need to do is get up. You cannot be lazy in this. Get up, go to the bank. Then you'll find plenty of people standing in the line. Wait for your turn. Then you'll get a withdrawal slip. Fill it up. Go to a teller. He'll give you a token. Wait for your token number to come. The moment your token number flashes, then go to the teller. Give your withdrawal slip. He will check on the moment. He'll see whether there's discrepancy in the account. He'll see whether there's a balance in your account. Then he'll give you cash. And very good. It's done. But somehow you have managed to lose two hours of your life. So what would you be doing? If you need 1000 rupees, you will, uh, you know, maybe withdraw 5000. Maybe you will need it tomorrow or day after tomorrow or something like that. So you have to keep a lot of cash with you because you can't literally waste two hours every day, right? Let's come. Let's come in the today's scenario. Right now, if I ask you to just withdraw 1000 rupees, how much? Hours would it require for you to do that? Okay, let's cut down to how how many minutes will it take? Not more than five, right? If you are, suppose you have entered an ATM, then not even a minute, I would say. Within one or 1.5 minutes, 90 seconds, you will be holding cash in your hands. This is how the technology has automated the normal business traditional business into a technologically based one is it more efficient now yes is it more secured so this yes or no will depend once we are complete with the entire yes syllabus see technology is a two-edged sword edge two-edged sword 
so with one edge you know we attack someone at the same time there is a chances that will hit ourselves with another edge so as technology goes up the new threats emerge which were not there like earlier in this manual system there was no no uh, threat, threat of uh, say um, hacking no one could you know hack your account from your bank because it was not even connected to other branches earlier after core banking system of course they are the, all the branches are cover or uh, connected to each other all your accounts your saving account fd and all are connected to one main main uh, uh, data entry in your name earlier it was not so by uh, you know converting from physical to technology uh, scenario new threats have emerged as well so emerging technologies bring about benefits as well as disadvantages okay along with them so let's see whether in all are we good using technology or not so these are the five subjects that we are going to uh, learn in eis five uh, chapters and each one of them carry equal marks correct now we know what do you mean by each and every chapter that we are going to see now let's see why do we need this i have already briefed you that uh, you will be auditing some of the stuff you will be using this financial accounting system you will be using an information system you should know its component you already use e-commerce you might get a client who is a e-commerce vendor and core bank system every second of your life even to check your account balance you are you know some way or another you are hitting the core banking system and of course you do withdraw right so if you withdraw money then mean you mean that that you have seen automated business processes so now imagine after doing ca you come up with a amazing idea which only you know that is not there out there and you develop an app you know to fit in such a way that your idea uh, gives you revenue out of it means you can commercialize your idea in such a way that you are earning huge lot of out of it say for example you have come up with the idea that see there are thousands of hotels out there in my country in my country and uh, i don't think that all of them are performing the way they are supposed to i mean not all are uh, you know not all are uh, working with the same efficiency i would say or not no it it doesn't happen every day that every hotel out there is full no there's a lot of hotels that don't see customer for days i would say so you have developed an idea what you want to do is you want to contact and aggregate all these hotels and make a portal make a website or maybe make an app and then give this app advertise this app and give it to all the consumers out there let them know there's a hotel with this name what is in it for you so maybe you are uh, promising them a fixed number of return of uh, customers and then in return you are asking them to reduce their prices because there are competition right now and then at the same time for customers point of view you are asking them to pay money to you and then in turn you can pay to the the uh, actual hotel owner and then customers can get to choose which hotel they want because you are providing them with thousands and thousands of options you can compete with money you can compete with reviews and ratings and see all this you have facilitated this was your dream this was your idea and now you have started working on it suppose you want to name this oyo yes yeah, actually i was talking about oyo some of you were correct so what oyo rooms did is simple they have aggregated the hotels they have aggregated the customers and now what they are doing nothing literally they are earning every thousands and lakhs of rupees by doing nothing whatever they had to do they have already done now they have hotels they have reviews they have customers all they have to do is just you know make arrangements for them can i say the same thing about uber and ola have you ever heard about uber and ola in your city or town or somewhere that you have been recently you have seen uber have you ever uh, you know you took a uber ride recently what have they aggregated correct 
they have aggregated taxis nowadays they have aggregated auto rickshaws see this they this is just pure idea and based on that they are earning 20% of whatever bill that you make with your driver so they had an idea they involved technology into it and they are earning right away it doesn't require a chartered accountant to think of a business it does not it requires a chartered accountant to audit the business but yeah idea it can come up to anyone correct so suppose a client of yours owns oyo ola olx uber anything and you want to audit their business are you going to be auditing their physical books or their system in system maintained books as of today's scenario of course you are going to audit them in their books of accounts no in system system in system you are going to audit them right they are not maintaining the physical books anymore right none of us uh, some of you might even have experience of article chip you might know so in india tally goes uh, i mean everyone knows about tally so suppose you you have a oyo as your client and they have an erp enterprise resource planning so this is a big system of financial and accounting system this is a big financial accounting system that you your client uses for their business and you are being charged with the responsibility to audit those financial system statements you need to know about this erp to be able to audit them this of course there is no solution to it if you don't like technology trust me you won't be a good chartered accountant without with the aid of technology at least in today's scenario you ought to know about technology see that was the reason icai made it mandatory in ca inter as well to know about the technology and that was the reason behind introducing this entire subject and they have given 50 entire marks just so that you could learn about the latest of the technologies how they are efficient and how they are working in the market i'm sorry and how you will handle those technologies in case of your practice or in case of your job or even if you decide to do your own business you can use this technology in your business your father's business or anything like that correct so this is the reason now we have discussed what are we going to do in this next couple of months okay maybe one and half month and why are we doing it please don't do it just for the sake of passing trust me passing is not difficult anymore you have 30 marks of mcqs you can easily score 20 25 out of it and what is left is just 35 40 marks it's very easy to get 50% of marks like you won't even have to bother much about it i don't want you to just pass i want you to go 60 plus beyond 60 make it your passion make technology your passion trust me believe in technology from today do everything you do normally but always you know keep on thinking what would have been a scenario if this process that i am doing would have been done with the aid of technology would i be able to save time and you never know you would be right there you would have some idea that you can you know make a business out of it you can earn out of it and maybe you can give me a call my number is there and you can know sir you have given me this wonderful idea to think about technology so i was brushing my teeth and just just thought ki yaar why am i doing it so is is there any technology how can technology help me brush my teeth and you just came up with a vibrating that new toothbrush electronic toothbrush and then you want uh, to you know market that in india there is not many vendors in india and you just started your own and then you are earning huge out of it just give me a check <laughs> thanks a lot okay so now let's go a bit deeper in what we are going to cover today so what are we going to cover today is chapter number 4 e-commerce m commerce and emerging technologies let us see these are the notes uh, you can buy them or some of you might already have them okay if you don't you can contact me okay so now first of all 
let me tell you how am I going to take this class before we actually start with the syllabus let me tell you this wonderful thing just give me one second it's loading yeah yeah so now this EIS and SM 50 marks each correct and 70 marks is descriptive and 30 is MCQ this class that I am going to take is will be based on practical approach what do you mean by practical approach this was not possible earlier let me tell you this very clearly the institute has done an amazing mind-blowing job by updating the practice uh, their study materials they have literally introduced everything out there that is new that is practical that is in vogue in fashion right now today into your syllabus so now the best part is i'll be able to show you each and every concept it is not that uh, the concepts of you know 1880s or 1990s that we'll be learning about no everything latest that we are going to see today can be easily so shown through google so we are going to use google like anything because we let's not keep anything to imagination let's just keep on searching whatever comes up and it's new then again i'll tell you how to write the papers and then that is a crucial part and then how to read and revise how to study this paper how to revise it revise like before exam and all and then i will arrange i will try and arrange a lecture maybe i'll give it on youtube for free if you are interested on my page to counsel you or maybe to explain to you what after CA what after CA means like what to do after CA of course so this uh, you are clear till this I want you to be clear beyond I want to, you to know right away right now today in CA inter level itself that what are you going to do after CA if this is additional i'll give it a try i'll try to incorporate in this one or maybe in uh, youtube i'll give it to you on youtube so in case of queries you can call, uh, whatsapp me or you know hike or anything on this number and you can give me uh, a mail on of education one at gmail.com okay fine should we start okay so just give me one second if this is not visible to you this part let me tell you my number is eight double six eight three two one nine zero seven and email id is f u t u r e of education e d u c a t i o n one as in figure at the rate gmail.com okay fine let's go okay now let's go to our chapter that is e-commerce m commerce and emerging technologies so now we have already discussed a little bit about e-commerce and how uh, technology has influenced our world let us see that what our textbook says about e-commerce and m-commerce so first thing e-commerce is a process of doing business electronically so are we changing the way we are doing business or are we changing the entire business altogether so it depends upon what kind of business you are into so if you are into suppose you are into sweet you are a you own a sweet mart 
you make various kind of sweets so of course delivery is important so you'll be making sweets and you sell it to customers how can you involve technology into it suppose you have opened up a website wherein you are you know asking people to you know order from anywhere in their from their houses and then you will be delivering it to them you have not changed your business still you are a owner of sweet mart but now what you have changed you have changed the way of doing the business earlier you used to be dependent on entirely upon the walk in customers okay now you are not now what you are doing is now you are just checking on your website or your mobile back end of the website that how many orders have received what is the address what have they ordered have they paid it or not is it a cash on delivery option whatever it is you just make arrangements for the delivery and then you are this is the way you are working right now so you have not changed the business you have changed the way of doing the business okay and what if you were a uh, mm, let me say Oh, 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 okay you were uh, uh, have you do you know jyotish uh, i think no people who tell you a future or something like that so now you used to wait for people to come and then used to you know look at their kundli and then used to say okay this will happen to you or this will not happen to you now what you are involved introducing technology to your business now what you are doing is you are consulting clients online yeah you are you ask for certain details they give you online you make something out of it i don't know i don't understand the details intricacies of that and then you make whatever report you have to make online you just sell it to them you have not gone anywhere from your house neither is your customer coming to your house he's just providing you with your you with your details and you are doing the your job from your home so this you have changed your business entirely you used to be depend on people to walk into your ha- home you used to see their hands do whatever you do best at you know and then now what you have you are dependent on just the data that they give you and then based on that maybe take a photograph of their hands if you know like if that works i don't know so something like that you can do so that you have changed the business now you are entirely online no need to you know even keep an office for that you know you can work at your leisure of your home so basically it says that it refers to use of technology to enhance the processing of commercial transaction between a company its customers and business partners company customers and business partners it involves two types of uh, variety of uh, this business or transaction first is b2b and second is b2c what do you mean by b2b transactions b2b transaction means business to business transactions business to business transactions now what do you mean by b2c transaction b2c transaction means business to consumer so business to business suppose you are asking your supplier by via email to supply 1000 ton of cotton bills to you that is business to business you are actually supplying you are a flipkart owner you are supplying or maybe a vendor from for flipkart and you are supplying the actual things to the customer then it is business to consumer so business to business means supplier data gator that thing kind of things and business to consumer means to the end user that you are giving so now recently they have said that roughly 350 million indian citizens are already online means they are buying online they are their presence they are electronically present online and that this number is expected to go double i mean it will be 600 million i mean 600 million can you imagine by 2020 this is more than the projected users of usa by that time of course we are ahead in uh, some of the things like population but again we are good at technology as well so imagine a market so imagine a person who is starting a business in india and the same time someone else is starting the same business in usa your reach of customers would be going to be double and triple than what he the other person in usa is going to get correct this is a power of technology in emerging countries like india so let's just see what was uh you are basic you know how technology has uh, changed our lives let's just see that by an example so uh, we used to wake up earlier and now also we wake up right is there any change in that 
no or oh, there is not let us just see how do you wake up now your mother ask you to wake up no <laughs> she slaps you if you don't <laughs> okay but i am not talking about that okay there is something wrong with this technology i am talking about me doesn't like my attitude okay so now suppose this is how you wake up you used to wake up before this technology hits you and after this technology now how things have changed we'll see by this uh, table first thing is you wake up so you used to have an alarm clock with a snooze button in it and you just press the button that's all you do right i hope you it's clear yeah so alarm clocks there was a snooze button right nowadays mobile phones there are plenty of apps out there they have applied their brain to a such an extent that they ask you to solve a mathematical quiz before you can press the snooze button imagine applying that like to ca students for you if i ask you 2 plus 2 you your hand your body automatically goes towards your calculator this is this is what you are doing right now today you are dependent on calculator to do the basics of the maths so like science students sometimes now they do better maths than us <laughs> oh go oh, sorry science people are supposed to do better maths than us <laughs> that was the reason you took ca right <laughs> you don't know maths <laughs> but then there is one thing that you don't know maths and there is another that you have to use a calculator to do plus 2 so that is in, in you know that is a bit alarming i would say <laughs> so nowadays mobile uh, this mobile phones have uh, alarm apps what they do is they ask you to solve a mathematical quiz before you can snooze them so that is something just changed because of technology now you cannot simply just press the snooze button and just go to sleep no you cannot do that anymore you used to do that now you cannot for before technology there was a concept of mom you couldn't possibly snooze that ever in your life <laughs> okay let's be serious now okay to do morning chores so, uh, suppose i imagine you cook something i imagine i'm saying earlier people used to cook or make breakfast now they have an option of home delivery that to on mobile you just you know go to swiggy zomato or food panda or any anything that you like or uber eats nowadays it's going on just place your order whatever you want to have and just you know be get ready for your office or work or class or school maybe something like that. and by the time you get ready your breakfast is here that does saves a lot of time cost a lot of money as well but things have changed going to office you want to go by auto rickshaw go to the auto rickshaw stand search for auto stand on a road and just keep your hand like this oh sir 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 please can you go can you take me there can you take me say i won't go you go by walking nothing like that goes on anymore you have an app open uber or or uh, ola or this is a car of jugnu right or wings cab or any local cabs that is out there in your city so just open uber app book a cab he will be there in in your door in less than 15 minutes go sit there relax have peace of mind and you reach your destination without even bargaining as to the rates and anything like that plus they are safe now office admin jobs are also now done by apps and post now email you don't have to send documents now you can only send a scan copy of an email over an email or you can you know people nowadays are doing half of their business through whatsapp i would not recommend that still people are doing that i don't know why then the procurements and all is also electronic nowadays so procurement of items like electronic furniture mobiles this all you can buy from amazon gets delivered within uh, you know a day if you are amazon prime owner so let's try this illustration for those who have money for those who don't imagine this illustration go to i want recommend snapdeal go to flipkart or amazon create an id i i think 100% of you guys have that id already created shopaholic some of you are <laughs> now uh you have to put in all the details or you just have to press uh, login with uh, facebook so what does that do login with facebook 
you don't have to give any of your details they already know your details from facebook they'll take whatever they need from the facebook profile gets easy see anyways that facebook data is public so they are taking your public data from a public domain <laughs> correct okay if you are you don't own a facebook account much probability as you don't own a facebook account now it is because people have moved on students have moved on to instagram i i came to know recently so because their parents are on facebook now <laughs> so uh, okay any uh, or if you don't have a laptop go take your mobile open play store download amazon and just get on with get over with it now what you need to do is type any product maybe the latest phone uh, today it's uh, oneplus 7t pro or something like that pro just you know go to that product add to cart and you'll find plenty of options just uh, you know check the delivery how many days it's ta it's taking to deliver is the address correct then you know look for some coupons or look for some offers in hdfc bank or sbi then look for what all payment options you have so you choose the be best alternative that you have got apply coupons maybe take a debit emi or a credit card emi take normal emis cashless emi as well or maybe you don't want to pay at all you just want to cash on delivery thing let's just check that and move on next step is pay or cash on delivery and then you'll see after 2 3 days things will get delivered to you see this is how easy things are nowadays you want to know about the product just type that product in google and just write the word review you will find thousands of websites videos audios blogs discussions about that particular product you will get to know exactly how that product works whether it is good for you or not whether it will solve the purpose that you are buying it for or not so this can be seen very easily using technology now let us see what are the benefits of this technologies first and foremost the main benefit uh, of this technologies goes to various people for customers of course it is beneficial for sellers again it is beneficial and one you know wild card entries it is beneficial for government as well yes you heard me correctly let us see how it benefits to each of these three parties customers sellers and government first thing first customers or individuals or users the most important thing is convenience all of you lazy guys out there you you wanted to learn iis eis but not at the cost of going to classes so for you this e-commerce the way you have bought this lectures brings you convenience you are sitting sleeping i don't know what you are doing some of you are like you know in trance or something i don't know relaxed and then you are watching my face this much you can watch at the corner of the screen main screen and you are just you know as a drooling like this oh, okay yeah yeah technology yeah so this convenience is because of e-commerce otherwise you would have been here in my class maybe 6 am <laughs> it's not 6 am right now i'm just saying now time saving how is it time saving number of operations that can be performed both by potential buyers and sellers increases for me i am recording it once but i can sell it n number of times to n number of students whoever wishes to buy i can give a link correct next is various options so you might have you know at the time of buying this lectures you might have had many alternatives there will be different prices different reviews and you know some of them or some of the lectures give uh, demo lectures free of cost some of them are just free altogether so you have various options it's very easy to find reviews of course you might have searched for the reviews of my classes as well so it's very easy nowadays to find reviews all our earlier students they give reviews it's easy to find coupons and deals some of you might even got some good discount on this lectures and it's any time access 
there's no bar you can buy this lectures anytime you want now let's see how this is benefiting custom uh, this sellers so of course increase customer base i am in pune right now i am recording where are you located if this would not have been the technology case i would have had to come to each one of you in different cities you might be currently 160 centers are you know watching this it would have been very difficult for me to go to all this 160 uh, centers and then do this entire class of whatever hours it is 160 times instead i am just doing it once and repeating it again and again again and again again and again using technology so now this increase in customer base and it provides a dynamic market so let us just read this together with this dynamic market means it is in, with the intention of sellers since there are several players providing a dynamic market which enhances quality and business the thousands of teachers out there do who give ais this classes so i have to do something different to stand out so that means you get better quality product considering the competition now why is it a benefit to seller because if i give a good quality product i'll get a good review for that and again my market will increase now recurring payments do you know recurring payments like rd it's a recurring payment every month they deduct a particular amount so by use of technology i can keep on selling the product to my customer and he'll keep on paying me so this recurring transactions become easy instant transaction the moment you press buy and you pay instantly transaction is done you will get a code you will get a link to download the lectures and then instantly you can start watching right away no need to wait for the date when the class will begin and then every uh, every day go to 2 hours if you, if you want to finish this off in one month you can why it's up to your convenience reduction in cost for the sellers the buyers uh, reduction in cost to buyers from increased competition in procurement as more suppliers are able to compete in an electronically open market so if more supply less demand what will happen to the cost cost means cost to customer i'm talking about if there are more sellers in the market and demand is less and price of the product is going to fall if price of the product falls the demand increases demand increases up to a certain extent where demand and supply are equal because further now as demand and supply are equal suppliers are not going to reduce the prices and if the suppliers are not going to reduce the prices demands are not no longer going to increase and now we have balanced to a demand supply you have read this in economics 12th right demand supply how the law of demand supply works and now this is the fair price of the product to supplier by electronically accessing online database of bid opportunities online abilities to submit bids and online reviews of the rewards now i can bid my product i i can bid for others uh, as well i can bid you know bid how you give bid so my product is see some one tcs requires a uh, computer i am selling computer so i'll bid my computer you can tcs i'll say tcs you can buy computers from me i'll give you at this particular rate yeah so it is a, an advantage for me as well i'll get to know that it is just wants this so there is an online portal for that wherein i am eligible to bid if i am the lucky one if i am bidding the lowest of all i'll be getting that contract and i'll be able to supply all this i'll be able to make such a huge amount of sell because of technology in overhead cost to uniformity i am reducing the cost in overhead cost by uniformity automation and large scale integration of management processes of course due to uniformity every seller will be doing uniform things now automation will be more because of technology and now large scale integration will be there because my customer base has increased if my customer base has increased my i'll have to increase my production if i have to increase my production i have to increase the consumption of raw material to increase the consumption i have to buy additional raw material so now at the time of buying i am buying a huge chunk of raw material and due to that i am getting a greater discount so my profitability is increasing as well so cost reduction in indirectly means that your profitability increases right 
and advertisement costs i am reducing in advertisement costs no longer i have to you know apply banners ask for mouth publicity ask for people i can easily advertise through advertise through um, facebook instagram twitter or you know likewise i can you know on a website or maybe youtube i can do that easily it gets easy now efficiency improvement due to reduction in time to complete business transactions particularly from delivery to payment now they are saying for a seller we are looking at efficiency is improved why is that due to reduction in time to complete business transaction so no customer is going to come to your shop physically nor they will bargain nor we will have to explain about the quality whatever you have to explain just write it down below the description of the product if they have any question they'll ask below the discussions in the discussions is answer those and just there is no concept of you know bargaining there is nothing like that you have put in your price if they like the price they'll buy it if they don't they'll just skip and you'll have to think about the prices again so things have gone fast now now reduction in errors time for information processing by eliminating requirement of reentering data so now once you have created your account at amazon Amazon already knows your mobile number, your email ID, your address for delivery, and everything. You don't have to put in anything. Neither do the seller. The seller has to just update where, where is, where is my product at this at this particular moment, and how much time will it take for me to deliver it to the customer. And then there is reduction in inventory because of just-in-time technology. What do you mean by just-in-time? You have studied in costing group one. Just-in-time is a method of inventory management. wherein you just order that much inventory you hold only that much inventory that is required for the processing as of now you don't hold any one single unit more or less just the moment you'll require additional it will come directly automatically this is how system works just in time system works so by default they'll see okay this is the production that is going to happen in next couple of days this is the required raw material out of that i have 50% rest 50% is automatically ordered before that production be even begins and the moment production begins just in that particular time i have the ample amount of raw material to complete that production this is how just in time works do you hold any extra inventory no there is no cost see you are saving a huge lot by just managing your inventory inventory management does cost a lot so just in time is helping to reduce that cost now creation of new market as you already know suppose take an example of dunzo have you ever heard about dunzo grofers or anything like that yeah so what they do is you have a kirana shop kirana you know grocery shop uh, so you have a grocery shop and say suppose uh, not many people know about it and uh, you know live let alone five three houses no one else ever comes to your shop now what happens is the danzo guy got to know that this area there is a shop but that is way inside you know they know about the shop or they will do they will enlist your shop in their app now whoever lives in nearby area will get the name of your shop even if he don't know where actually your shop is located they will know what all things you have in your shop and they can order it from him they will come to your shop they will collect and deliver to the customer so new market has been emerged for you your shop is there your business there your products are same but now you are getting order from beyond those five houses that we talked about earlier now you are getting orders from all entire area so new market is emerged easier entry into new market of course it gets very easy to enter into new how have you entered into this new market by just you know enrolling yourself on the dunzo app better quality of goods why are you required to keep a better quality of goods because of standardized specification and competition have increased and improved variety of goods through expanded markets and the ability to pro produce customized goods so as you have entered new market there will be at existing competition and as they are giving good products you have to have to have to give good quality product elimination of time delays of course fast time to market a business process are linked thus enabling seamless processing and elimination of time delays see don't sleep now it's just day one relax a bit this is not at all hard this is everything is general logic if you just if i ask you this you would have easily said each and every point of whatever is mentioned in here but still we have seen the benefits of e-commerce for customers point of view and from sellers point of view what are the customers point of view that we have seen we have seen that uh, it is convenient very good time saving there are various options 
you know it's easy to find reviews you have plenty of coupons and deals and any time access you can order any time you want in by in the case of business or seller now there is an increased customer base at the same time there is creation of new market and an easier entry into new market these three points are similar and then there is a recur recurring payment is made easy and there is instant transaction uh, and the, about the market i would say the it's a dynamic market more sellers are there you reduce cost and you improve on efficiency you reduce cost improve efficiency and you provide better quality of goods and eliminate time delay so this is how being a seller you get benefited by using e-commerce last but not the least the benefit to government instrument to fight corruption the first thing in line with the government's vision e-commerce provides a pivotal hand to fight corruption see you the moment you you know do anything online there is a log that is been created so now and whatever sales amazon is making it's all going online it's very hard for them for them to you know remove some of the transactions or maybe it's it's very literal it's very hard say for example uh let's take another route there was some particular document that uh, which belongs to your client and you are supposed to deliver it to a government official now what happens you go to that official and he asks you see everything is right in this document but i'll need 500 rupees cash for what i need it i will not pass on this document or i'll find something in stupid in it and i'll just revert it back i'll give it back to you and i'll just you know raise a demand or something now what is asking for is 500 rupees for no apparent reason come to the today's scenario you want to submit any particular assessment proceeding document you have to just scan it upload it on the portal do you even have to speak to any official no even if you have to speak to all you are speaking through our emails that is created a log is created an entry is created written evidence is created whenever you talk on email are you going to you no know, offer bribe is he going to you know accept or ask for the bribe on email no of course he is not that stupid if he does or you do then one of you are <laughs> is going to go to jail or maybe both of you are going to go to jail so so this is how e-commerce has you know uh, helped government to reduce corruption fight corruption and then reduce in use of ecologically damaging material now what is happening is ecologically or economically damaging materials are not getting physically transferred now they are transferred through electronic coordination of activities and the movement of information rather than physical object so by this ecologically damaging materials are not transferring any anymore so these are the two benefits to the government now there is a concept of e-commerce business model a business model can be defined as the organization of product services and information flows so now uh you have e-commerce business models a business model can be defined as the organization of product service and information flow and the source of sources of revenue and benefits for supplier and customer and e business model is the adaptation of organization's business model to the inherent uh, internet company economy what it is saying is business model can be defined as the organization of product service and information flow and the source of revenues and benefits for suppliers and customers so business model is how your business works even for you and for the customers this is all that is mentioned in the business model an e business model is the adaptation of an organization's business model to the internet economy so whatever business model you have on ground when it is adapted using technology it becomes e business model okay a business model is adopted by an organization as a framework to describe how it makes money on a sustainable basis and grows see for every business there has to be a model for earning revenue 
नो वन इज वर्किंग फॉर फ्री इन दिस वर्ल्ड आर यू वर्किंग फॉर फ्री इन दिस वर्ल्ड नो हाउ आर यू गोइंग टू अर्न मनी इज वॉट युअर बिजनेस मॉडल इज नाउ सपोज युअर ओन बिजनेस मॉडल when uh, we adapted using technology will be become your e business model so there are many e business models the many types of e business models that we are going to see now okay let us see the first one first one are is e shop business model will remain same you are applying technology to it and then let's see what it becomes so there is a shop when you apply technology it gets converted into e shop simple as that i own a apparel jewelry shop it's a hardcore physical shop out there in the market at the center of the market how what is going to be my business model i buy jewelry at suppose x amount i sell jewelry at x plus 10% that is how i work that is my business model correct apply technology to it i buy jewelry at x amount i sell it online at x plus 10 percent have i changed anything just i have added the word online so now i am creating a website by the same name as my actual shop and now i am selling those jewelries online i have For photographs and you know quality, weight and all those details that are required in while buying jewelry, colors, combinations and everything is going to be there, and I'm making a website for this. That is what an e-shop is. Suppose I have developed a game, uh, I have developed a game. I'll open a website for that. I'll sell that game online. So, for example, there is uh, SonicNet.com, W for Women. So what they are doing, e-shop is a virtual store. storefront so main storefront is actual wherever your actual office is situated this virtual storefront is where your office is situated online that sells product services online orders are placed and payments are made their convenient way of effecting direct sales to customer allow manufacturers to buy intermediate operators and thereby reduce cost and delivery times okay that you know e shop means shop that is online now what do you mean by e malls the e mall is defined as the retailing model of shopping mall have you ever seen a shopping mall yes you have don't lie to me you have seen a shopping mall and suppose that same shopping mall goes online so whatever biggest shopping mall you have in your area suppose by that name there is a website and if you go or log into that website there web all the brands that are available in the shopping mall are available in that website choose whatever brand you want want buy whatever product you want it will just like going through mall a conglomeration of different shops situated in convenient location in e-commerce that is how shopping e malls work then there is a concept of auction e auction and auction have you ever heard the word auction you have let me tell you so you have seen people you know making an auction of some things like uh, suppose a painting and then what they do is uh, uh, there are two types of op- 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 auctions so one is open and one is by invite only suppose let's talk about an option wherein it's a closed one okay okay it's invitees only so you have got an invitation to the auction okay you have got an invitation to the auction now you reached the venue i am talking about option not e option you have reached the venue now the painting will be there on in the showcase so then after a particular time the bidding will start so you have seen the painting you are interested in it okay yeah, and you have plenty of money assume now what is there for you to know assume you have a lakhs and crores and crores of rupees you have used technology for your benefit and you have given me my check that was due and then you have a lot of money still now you are interested in that painting correct now the bidding starts suppose uh, there is a base price for that painting suppose the painter has keep, kept uh, maybe 10 lakhs it's a very amazing painting 10 lakhs is the basic that he is expecting now you say okay 10 lakh is okay i can even pay uh, about 1 lakh more so 11 lakh is good so you raise your hand and say sir i will pay you get your uh, 
number to show now so you just uh, pick up that number where it is written your number and just you raise your hand and by default suppose uh, this gets uh, noted by the auctioner whoever is performing the auction and that person says okay so mr so and so has raised his hand or miss so and so has raised her hand that means she or she is interested to buy the painting and wherever you raise a hand 10 lakhs are increased so if you raised it once so it is 10, 11 lakhs now at the same time someone else is interested in the painting as well they have done the same thing so now what is the cost very good 12 lakhs and this goes on 13 14 18 25 35 now the last that you have done is 35 and then no one is you know no one is like you know i cannot give no one can give it anything more than 35 this is like more than top so now 35 the auctioner will say 35 1 35 2 35 3 sold so tak 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 you know like that and it is sold the painting is been sold to you for 35 lakhs so you have won the auction of that particular painting this is how auction is done right now you pay and you take that painting home same way e auctions happen instead of raising a hand you place a bid online you get a website for that particular e auction suppose there is a company called tcs you don't have to suppose there is a company called tcs they want to auction 25000 crore worth of land they have decided to auction it into two parts one and two one part is 1250 crores another part is 1250 crores is it correct they have invited you along with five more people to participate in the auction now all these five people are going to get access to this website wherein this auction is going to happen you will get your own login id and credential and whenever the auction starts you will be able to place the bid using by pressing a button bid the moment you press that 10 lakhs will increase and your name will pop up that this person has uh, till now quoted the highest price for that particular painting or for that particular land and whoever bids the last or whoever is uh, you know agrees to pay the highest amount is been awarded and has been uh, awarded the price or auction and then he has to pay that much amount whatever he has promised and he'll get the land so this entire thing can be done online as well <clears throat> okay so for example there is a concept of onsale.com www.onsale.com where you can place your own bid so some of them can be an open one as well right now there is a concept of portals portals are the channels through which websites are offered as content the control of content can be a source of revenue for firms through charging firm for advertising or charging consumer a subscription for access so this portals they give you access of the website that you wish to surf suppose youtube you want to surf youtube there is a portal that uh, you know provides youtube so of course for providing this they will show you some uh, advertisement correct you'll have to see the advertisement or else you'll have to pay the premium price if you want to enjoy the website without advertisements these are portals work now i have already explained it to you what do you mean by an aggregator let's take an example of zomato have you ever heard about zomato what do they do for living what zomato does is they they have aggregated all the you know uh, hotels restaurants mess or any any person who works in the food industry and they have aggregated them they have aggregated the consumers as well now they just do one thing they just provide whatever is available on their website and or their app and they have given the app to the consumer so consumer gets amazing offers and everything and he can order online and zomato guys will be delivering the product so they have aggregated the so this kind so we have many aggregators we have uber ola is are also aggregators they don't you know it does uber on ola own all the cars that did you know give no they don't they have aggregated people who own the car and have time to draw, uh, drive but no customers 
they promised them that this uber and ola will provide them with customers you provide and they ask in return you just give us 20% okay fine same will apply to zomato and same is the case with ola uber and zomato uber eats swiggy all are doing the same thing they are aggregators they are known as aggregators then there is a concept of virtual communities have you ever have heard about the concept of blogs or maybe discussion rooms so some of them are premium some of them are free so if you own a community virtual community or blog or something you can ask them to pay the money as well virtual community is a community of customers who share a common interest and use the internet to communicate with each other amazon.com provides a website for exchange of information on the wide range of subjects relating to their portfolio of products whatever products amazon sells there is a concept of discussion on that product you can ask questions to the seller or existing customers and they can answer whether this product is compatible with my product or not or whatever whether i'll be able to use this whether the quality is good all these questions can be discussed in this virtual communities now there is a concept of e marketing that i have given you concept of youtube ads right so e marketing is the use of electronic communication technology such as internet to achieve marketing objectives you'll find some of the competitors deliberately give their ads on competitors website so if you are at uh, so it will happen not in major cases but minor cases it can happen that you are on some particular mr x website who sells um, biscuits suppose or cookies now mr x is also in the same city and he also sells cookies so what mr x will do uh, on mr a's website he will uh, try to put his ad he'll pay extra for that if mr a is not careful with it any customer that is going on mr a's website will see an ad from mr x now mr x knows that whoever whomsoever comes in a's website i is definitely interested in buying cookies i also work in cookies so i'll give my ad there so if they don't like the prices there i'll give some unrealistic prices just i just want to grab that customer and when the moment he clicks on that ad he goes to x website and buys the product so now this e marketing has been done your customer has gone to somewhere else be aware technology i have said you uh, it's a two edged sword double edged sword you know e procurement so tcs uh, tcs is doing e distribution thing i'm sorry e procurement is the management of all procurement activities what do you mean by procurement to get something to procure maybe raw material or something so business models based on e procurement seek seeks efficiency in accessing information on now it's very interesting just you know be concentrate here you are looking for suppliers so you want to procure something you want to you know procure some raw material you will first thing you'll search for a supplier who all in the market are able to supply this product or who supplies the product next thing whether those suppliers have that product in their in stock or not means availability of the product so first thing is supplier availability of product price of the product so avail so supplier for the raw material availability of raw material price of raw material quality of raw material and then delivery time as well collaborating with partners to pull this will talk about later first thing is what you have searched for a supplier you are looking for someone who can supply the raw material has those raw material in stock that is it is available with him in stock he is giving you a fair price the quality is pretty sure like pretty enough and the delivery time is least so this is this is the perfect supply that you have found out because of e procurement websites now second avenue is customers are you alone in the market who wishes to procure this raw material no of course not it is not possible someone somewhere also wishes to procure the same software so let us do one thing let us contact that customer tell him that i have isolated this supplier who has a plenty of stock available giving us the best price and best delivery i am i want one ton of the product raw material you want one ton of raw material let's quote for 
ask for two tons of raw material. You take one ton, I'll take one ton. But we'll negotiate on price. Will the supplier be interested to negotiate now? Yes, he's getting an order for two tons of his raw material, whatever the finished product. Raw material for them is a finished product for the supplier, right? So now they are as well collaborating with partners to pull as cost savings by their buying power and secure the best value deals. This is the magic of e-procurement. E-procurement intermediaries specialize in providing up-to-date and real-time information on all aspects of supply of material to the business. Amazing na e-procurement. E-distribution. So now the e-distribution model helps distributors to achieve efficiency savings by managing large volume of customers, automating orders, communicating with partners and facilitating value-adding services such as order tracking through each point in the supply chain. So suppose an Amazon. There are plenty of people on Amazon, those who are there to buy the product. So what they'll do instead is, they will give you a perfect e-distribution channel. Or they'll be making an e-distribution model. Wherein you will select a product, the moment you make the payment, that order will go to their distribution model. And then the particular seller will be intimated that this product has been bought by this particular buyer. This is his address. Deliver it ASAP that uh, seller automatically will uh, the, throughout system this is happening uh, there is no call or communication about this throughout system this order is going everywhere you have paid the money and your transaction uh, order placed the moment it is written order placed automatically whatever i am speaking now is happening the seller gets an intimation that the, this product has been uh, bought by some customer this is his address automatically wherever the product is situated to the most nearest location to the customer there also system automatically sends the mail or message that this product is lying with you and the customer nearby area is asking for that product deliver it asap now whether the person is actually delivering it or not just keep on updating on the system okay i am out for delivery okay i have reached there okay i have handed over the product to the customer okay he is a sign of the customer so customers have accepted the product or if it is a cash on delivery customer has accepted the product and also they have made a cash on delivery payment Correct. So everything can be tracked and this is the perfect e-distribution uh, model wherein you just buy a product and uh, everything uh, rest is being taken care by the system. An example of a firm specializing in e-distribution is Wipro.com. So uh, Wipro.com uses internet to provide fully integrated e-business enabled solution. Fully integrated e-business enabled solution that help to unify the information flow across all major distribution process including sales and marketing, automation, customer service, warehouse, logistics, purchasing and inventory management and finance. Whatever, see, this, they have, uh, you know, they have merged or integrated so many things. They have integrated e-business enabled solutions that help to unify the information flow across all major distribution processes like sales happened, marketing, after marketing someone there is a possibility of sale, then automation, then customer service, warehouse, logistic, purchasing, inventory management and finance. Everything has been integrated. TCS is providing that services. So these are the types of models that you will be seeing in this e-commerce business. E-shops means your shop electronically. E-malls are your malls, imagine a nearby mall, but electronically again. Auctions, I've explained it to you how auctions work and if that is being done through a website, we'll say that is the e-auction. Then you have seen portals who let you access the website and in, in exchange, they ask you to see some advertisements. Then there are buyer aggregators like Zomato, Uber, Ola. They aggregate sellers and products and they give the app to the or the UI to the customer. So, uh, you know, large economies of scale is being provided there. Now, there are virtual community, commun communities like blog or Amazon, wherein you can discuss about the product or services. Now, there's a concept of e-marketing, wherein I've said that people do uh, send their advertisement on computer's website. Now, there is a concept of e-procurement, wherein you are looking for a supplier who, who has that raw material available with him, who, who's giving the, quoting the best price, giving the delivery in the least amount of time. And you're also looking for, Customers who are interested in the same raw metal 
and by using larger economies of scale you are getting a better deals out of it in e distribution what you are doing is in e distribution automatically system itself uh, creates a best and most efficient distribution channel for that particular transaction and automatically keeps on you know updating every 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 node in this channel that this person has bought this just deliver it within this one day now the customer is that uh, this e distribution uh, lets the customer know right now your order is in this state now it's in your state now it's in your city now it's in your area and now it's in your hands correct so this is how e distribution works so these are all the types of business models that we have seen today okay so far so good are you understanding am i going fast or slow you can you know okay right now i think you are looking for a, <clears throat> a recorded lecture so maybe you won't be able to do much but if you don't understand something just reduce the this speed or maybe increase it or if you like if you think i'm slow i doubt you'll think i'm slow <laughs> but if you don't like it you know i've just something and just you can give me feedback for for future classes i'll try and manage that i am very open to feedback right away now the e business models relating to e business market can be summarized as given below okay we are going to summarize into types of models there are three types of models one that we have seen is business to consumer second is business to business and third is consumer to consumer let's take a look at each one of them sabse pehla <clears throat> generally this uh, business to consumer that we are reading right now generally this supports the activities within the customer chain in that it focuses on sell side activities in business to consumer they are focusing on sell side activities sellers point of view for example e shops e malls e auction buyer aggregators and portals they are all uh, focusing on sellers for example cisco.com and amazon.com now business to business this supports the supply chain of organization that involves repeat commerce between a company and its supplier or other partners so of course business to business is what repeat so transactions suppose that auction case na it gets repeated i have divided 2500 into two parts so this is a repeat transaction they can this is a possibility of procurement the possibility of distribution there are portals there is e marketing so this is what it will go on between businesses throughout example emall.com now there is a third amazing concept of customer to customer this supports the community plan surrounding the organization and can be seen as the commercial extension of community activities whatever you are doing in a community if you try and commercialize those activities it will come into cnc model so e auctions virtual communities are the examples example is eba.ebay.com so there are three models business, business to consumer general one more in, inflected towards uh, sellers then there is business to business it's a continuous movement of businesses it is between uh, business and the supplier or creditor or anything like that data creator and then there is a consumer to consumer wherein uh, i am saying that if there is a if you you uh, know put in a commercial aspect in any of the communities or uh, Uh, no surrounding an organization then it gets converted into consumer to consumer model for example virtual communities pay premium virtual communities <clears throat> so now just give me one second so now we have seen a lot of things let's see we have we know what do you mean by e business we know what are the business models e business models we know how that those can be divided into three kinds and now let's see what are the components of e commerce okay the first thing that is given is user without user there can be nothing this may be individual organization or anybody using e-commerce platform as e-commerce has made procurement easy and simple just on a click of button e-commerce vendors need to ensure that their products are not delivered to wrong users in fact e-commerce vendors selling product like medicine drugs need to ensure that such products are not delivered to wrong person or user some of the medicines are critical 
so what would happen if you have ordered some particular medicine and it gets by mistake of the seller delivered to me and i'm consuming those medicines and something odd happens to me who will be responsible seller of course should he take care about that so user is the most important component of an commerce without a user there cannot be any commerce so individual organization or body using the e-commerce platform are known as users and as e-commerce has made e-procurements or procurements easy and distribution easy what they want is they want to take care you should take care that the correct things are delivered to the correct user now of course if there is a recipient of something there has to be a person who is delivering it so there is a vendor e-commerce vendor this is the organization entity providing the user goods or services asked for like for example flipkart e-commerce vendors further need to ensure following for better effective efficient transactions sabse pehla suppliers and supply chain management this being another important component of whole operation for effectiveness they need to ensure that they have enough and right goods suppliers what are they trying to say here for so e-commerce vendors are someone who provide the user with goods and services he is asking for right now for example flipkart they have given so but e vendors e-commerce vendors are also they need to be better effective and efficient right how will they uh, be better effective and efficient first thing that they have mentioned is supplier and supply chain management this being another important component of the whole operation for effectiveness they need to ensure that effectiveness they have enough and the right goods supplier enough and the right goods supplier so there are many suppliers so flipkart will so suppose you are searching for iphone flipkart will have many vendors who sell iphone plus every each and every vendor should have that particular thing in stock as well right second they are financially and operationally safe i mean it should not happen that i am making a payment and i am not getting a product nor am i able to track the vendor this is very unsafe so so they are financially and operationally safe so if i give them money i should be getting my product or if i don't get a product i should be able to get my money back suppliers are able to provide real time stock inventory real time stock inventory is the primary crux of this business flipkart cannot say after taking the order that sorry i am not able to find a supplier has it ever happened to you that you have booked something and they are saying that supplier does not have it it's very rare very rare right so they have to know about the real time actual quantity of goods that is available with the various suppliers with various suppliers who are ready to supply that particular product that you are asking for being a user the order to deliver time is very short the moment the customer places an order the distribution channel by default gives the information to the seller supplier and then supplier has to instantly start delivery now first thing is supplier and supply chain management in supply you are looking for good supplier who is financially and operationally safe and is giving you a real time stock inventory and the delivery time is very short now second aspect is warehouse operation when a product is bought it is delivered from a warehouse of e-commerce vendor this place is where online retailers pick product from the shelf pack them as per the customer specification pre decided standards and prepare those products to be delivered this operations has become very critical to the success of the whole e-commerce business many e-commerce co companies are investing huge amount of money in automating the whole warehouses so what happens is the moment you place an order for something what they will do is they will take that particular uh, product off the shelf or from their warehouse wherever they have stored it they will do a bubble wrapping that you see amazon or flipkart does that bubble wrapping and they have their own carry bag sort of things of amazon or flipkart they put it there they seal pack it they apply the uh, transport ticket and order details whatever they need to do they have attached the bill and then they start delivery that is the reason we are able to track it so wherever they go to the next place in next place by default what they do is by default they just scan that whatever that page is stuck uh, like you know there and they scan it and then it is noted that yeah of course from delhi it is now in maharashtra it has entered maharashtra 
they don't have to physically enter every time just have to keep on scanning with that machine you know you get machines like that in dmart and uh, big bazaar you might have seen no yeah have you seen those machines red color light flashed and then barcode reader have you ever heard about barcode reader so they just read through that barcode reader and this everything is noted down in the system so they need the warehouses to be very efficient now shipping and returns shipping is a supplementary and complementary to whole warehouse operation see because warehouses are generally placed outside the local premium limits of the well, they are far off locations so from that warehouse to uh, customers home it should not take much time is that what is said so it is supplementary and complementary to whole uh, warehouse operation fast return have become unique selling preposition usp it is uh, so we usually use the word usp it's like it's my unique point you in unique means that is why i am famous so amazon flaunts one day delivery it says you order today you'll get it by tomorrow this is the usp they are claim they are saying if you don't get get it by tomorrow don't pay for the product or will not like whatever they say whatever they want because they are confident that anyhow they will be delivering it by because this is their usp they have maintained the way that they supposed to have they are fabulous e distribution and e procurement uh, this models so they are claiming it to be their usp that they deliver the fastest in the market okay so this vendors need uh, need very effective and efficient return processing e-commerce catalogs and product display see proper display of all product being sold by vendor including product details technical specification makes for the better sales conversion ratio this help customers judge the product service being sold a good catalog makes a lot of difference uh, to whole customer experiences suppose you are looking for an iphone you'll get a picture of iphone with everything that is there in the iphone you'll get pictures from all the angles you'll get to know whatever is inside you'll get to know about the specification the sound quality the camera quality each and everything will be there so it is like a catalog that you'll get for the product there online so that it's easy it's easy for you to judge whether you actually want this product or not whether it will be perfect for you or not whether you are actually interested in buying that or not marketing and loyalty program so loyalty program establish a long term relationship with the customers so what are the loyalty programs that we are talking about so mintra is giving you a loyalty program so if you buy some product from mintra so they award you some points which can be used at the time of future buy by the time of buying any time in the future if you are going to buy some more clothes again from mintra you can utilize those points that you have earned in earlier purchase this is loyalty program So this is what binds you to the company and company to you. So company is bound to give you discount and you are bound to use that discount because you have earned that discount by buying earlier. So this builds up a long term relationship between the customer and the buyer, seller and buyer. The best example can be a customer loyalty program being run by airlines industry. See this is people say this is a fraud but I don't know. I have not uh, frankly I have not experienced this. Uh, I don't travel that frequently with an by an with a like with the aid of airline but airline industries have one of the best uh, customer loyalty programs they give you fly miles uh, yeah fly points or mile point or something like that they fly miles they call it every company calls it something different so what happens every time you take a flight uh, after successfully completing the flight they award you certain points which can be used at the time of booking any hotels or flights in your subsequent travels So in airline industry, customer can get good discount, free tickets based on loyalty points accumulated. The same concept being used by e-commerce vendors to secure or to ensure customer loyalty. Now showroom and offline purchases. Few e-commerce vendors over period have realized that their products can be sold fast if customers are able to feel, touch, or see these products. Logical. कैसे? Suppose you wanna buy a cloth. Suppose you wanna buy a T-shirt. so you can see the color pattern and everything but can you actually feel the quality of cloth actually is it cotton or not it's very difficult to judge that by even like i, I think it's difficult to judge that by only look of it so you want to touch it you want to see whether it's actual cotton or not so it's saying that some of the people actually do uh, prefer showroom so that is the reason some of the brands which are earlier only online for example roadster 
रोड स्टार रोड स्टार समथिंग लाइक दैट दिस वॉज अ ओनली मिंत्रा बैंड नाउ दे हैव अ शॉप फिजिकल शॉप इन मॉल्स एटलीस्ट इन पुणे इट हैज इन फिनिक्स मॉल इज सम ऑफ यू आर फ्रॉम पुणे यू नो दिस सो दे हैव ओपन ऑफलाइन परचेस लाइक स्पॉट एज वेल These vendors have opened outlets for customers' experience of their product. Of course, logical. Different ordering methods. There is a way. These are the ways customer can place his/her order. Say cash on delivery today is most preferred method. You sub. It's like people feel safe in COD. Yes. So you know, if you change your mind, just don't pick up his phone. <laughs> okay. He'll come. He'll knock the door. He'll go away. <laughs> guarantee is the product service guarantee associated with the product or service being sold. Money back guarantees help generate a security in customers' mind in case of any problem. Their money shall be returned. And you will see in Mintra they return your money within some hours. Like sometimes they return your money instantly. Now privacy policy it represent policy adopted by e-commerce vendor vis-a-vis -vis customer data information. E-commerce website must have a privacy policy. Customers are very concerned about the information that they are sharing. E-commerce vendors need to clearly explain them what the vendor plan to do with the various information that is collected from its customer. See in Amazon you have given plenty of information. You have given your name, you have given your mobile number, your email ID. You have also given them your WhatsApp number. You have given them your address where you are staying right now. Some of you might have given the address of your offices. Where do you work? This is a lot of information. It can and given a chance will be used against you. I have seen cases. I have seen you have seen tech parks, right? Have you ever been to any tech park, technology park, IT park? then you have to give your aadhar if they take your pictures they have to you know give your mobile number if they ask for an otp and that that is the level of clarification that is being given by them and then you are allowed to enter the tech park one recent uh, case emerged wherein the receptionist was selling this information 1000 rupees per line of data i used to buy a data of any particular person in just about 1 1000 rupees i got to know what's your name or your aadhar number pan number email address mobile number what do you do for living why are you there if you are carrying any laptop i'll even get to know your imi number of the laptop i'll know what kind of laptop you use is it windows or linux what kind of uh, you know softwares are there uh, like os at least i can guess so these are the kind of information this was emerged recently so and why do people buy this information for advertisement they are making a data so now they know that you use microsoft so all the apps that support microsoft they will be sending you advertisement for they know your age they know you are uh, that you are male or female they know your mobile number your email id you use google or you are yahoo or anything else they know a lot about you they can you know manipulate this information and you know sell further this information at i don't know god knows at what price this was much so this uh, e-commerce vendor should clearly say what are their plans with your privacy your what is their privacy policy now security represents the security policy adopted by the e-commerce vendors vendors website needs to state that online data used to transact is safe that vendors is using appropriate security including systems like ssl have you ever seen this secure socket layer ssl this guarantees that the data provider customer will not fall into the hands of malicious hacker while transferring from his her computer and on the web server let me give you a look ye bolte hai this lock you are saying right it is said connection is secure your information for example password or credit card number is private and is sent to this website you want to see the uh, certificate this it says it's valid and here it is uh, this certificate is intended for the following purposes identity of remote computer proves your identity so it is ensures your identity it proves your identity <clears throat> this is the version so this this particular is uh, Uh, given to ICI.org. This certificate is given to ICI.org. 
and uh, this is their public key and private key uh, this this is the path where this is saved so this shows issuer statement is also there you can see the statement this shows that whatever transaction is uh, you are whatever details you are giving in here are all safe see are all safe this is a legal repository komodo cyber security this is this are uh, this komodo security is protecting your uh, details in you know this is the level of security that has been there so this you need to see if you go to any website na suppose you go to youtube no okay let's go to income tax oh sorry companies acts website so it is written it is not secured what do you mean by not secure your connection to this site is not secure you should not enter any sensitive information on this site for example password credit card because it cannot it can be stolen by the hackers do you want to see this not secured at the time of paying money from your credit card no of course not you don't want to because so there is no secure socket layer no ssl no ssl certificate that is the reason you don't want to so wherever if you are buying something you are doing any internet transaction just make sure there is a lock like this and it's not like this not secured so why have companies like this is ministry of corporate affairs mca government website why have they chosen not to secure it because you are not supposed to put in any confidential information on this page this is a page where they say this is the companies act page this is a rules page effective date and notification page you are not supposed to use this page for anything uh, confidential okay but what if i just press mca dot gov dot in suppose <clears throat> okay again here you are not supposed to do anything and uh, suppose let's see where data is going no i think at the time of login it should be secured no it is not secured but uh, let's take an example of e filing so this is income tax india website here everyone who is filing their return uses this website to upload his return so this is of course secured because you will be will be filling up all your uh, login credentials or your financial information everything that you have earned throughout your year you will be giving all that sort of information here so of course it has to be secured so just look for this lock or security certificate at the time of doing any transactions okay now let's go to technology infrastructure okay okay just give me one second before we go ahead let me just revise complete very fast what we have seen today we have seen introduction to e-commerce that is what do you mean by e-commerce we have seen how our daily activities have been uh, you know uh, changed or affected because of this uh, e-commerce thing we have also seen some illustrations how we do business transactions or e-commerce transaction online we have seen the benefits of e-commerce we have seen benefits to customer we have seen benefits to sellers and we have seen benefits to government uh, there were two benefits to government first one was fight against corruption second was uh, reduction in ecological damaging material okay so now instead of sending papers you send emails so instead of physical objects now emails are going on so it is ecologically so you have reduced the use of ecologically damaging material now e-commerce models we have seen many models there we have seen shops e-malls e-auctions portals buyer aggregator virtual communities e-marketing e-procurement and e-distribution we have also seen there are three types of business models or to e-business market you know 
e-business models we have seen. Like first one is business to consumer, second is business to business, third is consumer to consumer. We see that business to consumer is generally focusing on seller, business to business is focusing on repetitive transactions and customer to customer is focusing on if you involve uh, commerce in uh, this what is it, virtual communities or commercial uh, it is community if you involve commerce in community. And then we have seen components of e-commerce. The first and most important component was user, the individual who is using it or the customer, I would say. Second important was the vendor, the person who is selling or providing that uh, service. Okay, so for supplier, we have seen that you to be a transaction, to be trans, uh, an effective transaction or efficient transaction, you need to check the supplier and a supply chain management. Supplier should be there he should have that goods and should he should be financial and operationally safe and he should give you real time uh, stock inventory and the delivery time must be very short the warehouse operation like picking the uh, particular product from off the shelf and packing it should be amaz amazing and then there is a shipping and return detail okay and then uh, of course uh, some of the companies it's their usp that they ship within one day for example amazon did they say that if you are a prime customer we promise you that we deliver within one day then we have seen shipping and returns the you shipping and returns sorry then we have seen e-commerce catalogs and product displays they give you videos photos uh, text or maybe documents they give you discussions every sort of things reviews about the products so that you judge you bet can be able to better judge the product then there is a marketing and loyalty program we have seen the uh, mintra credit some particular points after the purchase we have seen flipkart doing that started doing it now recently we have seen airlines companies giving you uh, frequent flyer credits okay now this is done to maintain the long term contract between the uh, seller and buyer we have seen some of the store owners uh, shop owners for example uh, roadster they didn't have their physical presence uh, before you know before the while, while starting the business all they had was mintra they were supplier of mintra but then what happened was their product started gaining momentum like name and momentum so they had to open certain stores so that people could actually walk in and physically check whether their material is actually up to the quality that they are saying and then gradually their sales increased even further now they that is point is covered in this uh, showroom and offline purchases now different ordering modes are there and the most frequently used is cash on delivery now there should be a guarantee for return and refund and there should be a privacy policy no one should be able to misuse your private private information for their benefit without your permission there has to be security security in what aspect security that your information which you are not giving them but you are using for example your bank detail debit card detail credit card detail this you are not giving this information to the seller you are using this information to make payment to the seller based on what the seller will be delivering the products you don't want them to know this information so that is the reason it is not covered in the privacy policy it has to be covered in security you are not giving away these details understand the difference now there has to be an ssl uh, secure socket layer and wherever there is no certificate never put in your inf information there okay this kind of things should be there okay so we have seen two components user and e-commerce vendor from tomorrow let's see the remaining uh, components tomorrow okay thanks a lot for your time this was a wonderful day and uh, you'll see gradually we'll learn a lot of concepts and i'll try to go word by word wherever possible because see i want my intention is uh, beyond i don't believe in mugging up stuff okay i believe in understanding the concept as to why we are reading what we are reading whatever is written why is it written the way it is written and let's see whether we work out things and i will well, naturally i want you to remember stuff I'm not mugging up if you want to mug up if you do i have no issues at all yeah no we uh, we intend to get good marks by whatever means but I, my intention would be to uh, give you as much knowledge as possible okay so that it doesn't happen that you don't understand something and just you know trying to mark up just plainly okay thanks a lot for watching i'll see you in the next one goodbye